Namaskaram, Medi Talk Lake, Elarkum Swagadam. In the number Chachashi and Pogana, Visham, kidney stones and the Dana, and the alum number of joint cheated to leather. NMC Medical Center, Shah Bele, Specialist Urologist, Doctor Iyad, uh, Iyad Imadana. Welcome to the show, Doctor. Thank you so much. Basically, he's not a Malayali. I don't know if he'll discuss it better than that. He'll be talking in English. Once again, welcome to the show. We've been talking about some things. We've been talking about some things. We've been talking about the number. 0529611333 is the number. Anytime you can talk about it. We've been talking about some things. We've been talking about some things. We've been talking about some things. Doctor, so what is kidney stones, basically? Well, um... First of all, I would like to thank you for uh, this nice invitation and uh, wish you a very happy new year for all of you. And uh, hopefully this year will be uh, the year of peace and happiness for everybody. Uh, back to kidney stones. Uh, kidney stones, it's uh, a result of uh, 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 a collection of crystals or uh, chemicals in the urine. When these chemicals are more than liquids, as we know, that uh, in uh, urine there is liquids plus chemicals mm. or waste. Usually the kidneys will eliminate these uh, chemicals, mm -hmm. but if this, the concentration of these chemicals more than the liquids, they will aggregate together oh. and they will cause, uh, they will uh, make like crystals, which will start to attract new other elements. Mm. And that will be, and this we call in medical terms as uh, concentrated urine or supersaturated urine. Okay. And this is the main reason for stone formation. So mm -hmm. we have to keep the balance. More fluids, less uh, chance to develop uh -huh. stones. Uh -huh. Okay. So um, there are, of course, different types of stones, and we will talk about all of them okay. uh, during our So talk. what are the causes, basically? What can cause kidney stones? Um, you know, the cause, uh, <clears throat> there is no specific reason for, for stone disease. It's oh. not like, for example, an infection, let's say, infection of some uh, organ, there is a bacteria, no. Mm. Here there are different types of stones. Mm -hmm. uh, the most common uh, type is uh, calcium, calcium, mm. calcium oxalate stones. Mm. Uh, there are other types like uh, uric acid stones, uh, phosphate stones, mm. strovite stones, or infective stones. Oh. So for every type, there is a specific reasons. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about the most common type, which is uh, calcium oxalate, we mm. can understand now that there is more calcium in urine. Oh, okay. And that will cause production of stones. Okay. Uh, uh, there, of course, there are risk factors mm. to develop the stones. If there is dehydration, for example, if not uh, enough drinking uh, water, mm -hmm. basically, mm -hmm. um, uh, some kind of, uh, uh, you know, um, hormonal changes, mm. like, for example, we call there is a glands here in the neck we call para okay. <coughs> parathyroid glands. Huh. In case of hyperfunction of these glands, stone uh, formation will start. Oh. There are other factors like obesity factors, like, um, uh, you know, surgeries, which is, are very modern nowadays for uh, obesity, mm -hmm. changing bypass and all these things. There is a high risk of form forming the stones. Okay. Is it hereditary? There is, uh, there is factors. We cannot deny that factor. It's there. Oh, yeah. it is? Yes. All yes. right. So... Uh, but it's not mandatory. It's, it's not mandatory, not but mandatory, there are possibilities. Not mandatory, but there is, there is possibilities, yes. How common is kidney stones nowadays? Uh, kidney stones are very common, mm. uh, especially in this part of the world, where mm. there are a lot of uh, dehydration, and uh, uh, especially for people who are exercising, who are sweating a lot, who are working mm. in the sun time and they don't drink enough water. In the United States itself only, there are more than half a million of people yearly, they will go to emergency rooms for, the re for stone problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it is estimated like one out of 10 people mm -hmm. will have somehow in their lives stone problems. Okay. And actually, I can say also that uh, the men have more chance to develop two times more than women to develop stone disease. Okay, okay. So yeah. uh, it, it can be uh, common in men? It can. It's more common in men than, I mean, in male more than female. Yes. Okay, all right. I, I can see some 
stone actually uh, yeah as you can see here it's uh, these stones which I removed yesterday from one patient uh, as you can see it's a solid material yeah, yeah. formed from chemicals I, I mentioned and it's it's a stones and by the way it's not a big size because it's uh, broken I mean by laser okay there they can be uh, such a small or even bigger size than this it can reach to the size of uh, let's say golf ball for example even okay. bigger apple can reach to the size of the apple and it can be at any part of the urinary system but uh, formation of the stones will start basically at the kidney and they will be as i mentioned small size then they can travel through the ureter and this is a very painful condition okay so what are the symptoms like how can i understand if i'm having kidney stone or not sometimes in some patients we discover it accidentally patients accidentally will, yes oh, patients okay. will come to uh, to check for uh, maybe other things abdominal pain let's say or something like that okay and we do ultrasound and we can see that the patient has renal stones uh -huh. uh, but if uh, the stone will move down as here mm -hmm as in this picture the this this is the kidney stone okay. this inside the kidney uh -huh. if the stone start to move here then this part we call renal pelvis or kidney pelvis it mm -hmm. will be like this it will be swelling in this part okay. because the urine flow will be disturbed mm -hmm. so it will cause blockage so uh -huh. once okay. once there is a blockage or there is movement of the stone mm. this contraction of the muscles of the ureter will start and severe severe pain will start Patients cannot tolerate this pain. They have to go to emergency the to take pain pain will be in the abdomen or pain, pain usually will start in the flank, huh. depends which kidney, right or left, mm -hmm. and it will travel down to okay. the lower abdomen. Uh -huh. Plus, there is a kind of vomiting, nausea. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they can see there is uh, blood in urine. Okay. Uh, there is symptom depends again depends on the location of the stone where it is now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, sometimes there is a symptoms like uh, <clears throat> irritation in the urine, mm. frequency, you know, urgency, okay, okay. blood. But the most common things which is um, patient cannot wait and he has to go to emergency. Even the painkillers in tablets will not help. He has to go to emergency for injection or for more. Uh, I mean uh, pain management. Okay, this pain will be continuous or only when we pass the urine, something like that? Uh, the pain will be like a colic. Okay, okay. Colic. It's not, uh, you know, sometimes from from what patient showing me, mm. even he doesn't need to talk. I can't oh. say, I can see that, I understand that he has a renal colic. Mm -hmm. Not like, for example, when they come to, uh, to the clinic and they say, I have pain here, I have pain there. Not any pain necessary to be from kidneys. Mm, mm, pain mm. can be from muscles, from any other oh, thing. Okay. But the pain in this situation is a colic pain, which is very severe and associated with other symptoms like, uh, as I mentioned, vomiting, mm. which is very common, okay. and changes in the urine color or uh, mm, feelings mm, mm. during the urination. All right. So once a patient approach a doctor, how it is <clears throat> recognized? So how is it diagnosed? Yeah. There are uh, two or three things which is, are important for the doctor. First mm -hmm. of all, uh, the history of the patient, mm. what's happened in the, during this period. Mm. And the patient will start to talk, of course, after pain relief. Mm. Sorry to interrupt, doctor. It will be a, uh, an, uh, an emergency situation or this pain will be there for a longer time? Actually, there are two types. Emergency when the, uh, the acute huh. uh, stage, when the stone moving in the ureter and causing pain and blockage. Okay. Sometimes patient will come to the clinic and he is relaxed. He has a stone, but oh. the urine is uh, flowing and he doesn't feel much pain. Okay. Might he has some, uh, you know, heaviness, something like that. Okay, okay. Sometimes even they don't have pain. Sometimes oh. they don't feel pain if mm -hmm. the stone is not causing uh, blockage. Okay, okay. So uh, for doctor, important, of course, to understand all this situation, mm -hmm. to ask uh, the patient if he has uh, some kind of... Uh, uh, you, uh, blood in urine, uh, he has any other symptoms uh, that we call medical history. Mm. Second, physical examination, which mm. is very important. And the third one we call imaging or uh, our radiological evaluation, mm. which is very important. For acute cases, of course, CT scans, we call it uh, non-contrast CTQB, which is very, very important to show us the size and the sites mm. of stone. Mm. After that, we can take decision what kind of treatment important for this patient. 
So uh, medical history, physical examination and imaging, of course we need to do also uh, for the patient some blood tests mm. like uh, kidney function and other bloods, uh, plus the urine, uh, which is uh, very important also in diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So once uh, diagnosed, what are the treatment procedures then? Uh, yeah, the treatment uh, actually depends on the size and the site of the Sites stone. Means? Site location of the oh, stone. Oh, okay. Because a stone can be located in different parts. Okay. Sometimes uh, in some patients, we just need to give some medicine mm. To, uh, and we call this medical expulsive therapy okay. or MET. Just take medicine. This medicine will give you more uh, urine uh, production, okay. drink more water, and uh. the stone will pass. We do this if the stone size is less than 5 mm. Uh, okay. It's less, if it is less than 5 mm? Yes, okay. less than 5 mm. We give the stone medicine. Uh. I, I mean, we give the patient medicine, and we let him go with follow-up. It's like uh, melting the stone. Yes, Is melting it? the okay. stone, dilating the urinary system, uh -huh, making uh -huh. the stone passage easier. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So there are specific medicine for that, and uh, we do uh, prescribe this medicine very common. Uh -huh. But if the stone is big in the size, and uh -huh. it's causing kind of a blockage, and okay. making uh, continuous pain to the patient, uh -huh. making kind of infection, uh -huh. Uh, in this in this case, of course, we have to go to uh, more treatment, more mm -hmm. uh, advanced treatment mm -hmm. uh, to relieve his pain and his obstruction. Mm -hmm. There are uh, different types of treatment, and mm -hmm. they are very advanced and, and very modern treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, there is a shock wave lithotripsy. Shock wave? Shock wave lithotripsy. Okay. okay. This uh, actually distance treatment. We mm -hmm. don't touch the patient. We just oh. place him, yeah. Okay. Uh, in case of, uh, let's say, um, there is one centimeter stone in mm. the kidney, mm. patient doesn't want uh, to have invasive mm. procedures, mm. we recommend this type of treatment, which we call uh, shock wave lithotripsy mm. or ESWL. Okay. So uh, we place the patient and we start to focus the stone from distance. Mm. We don't touch him. We give him little uh, sedation. Then we start uh, giving the shocks directed to the stone. The stone oh. will be broken to small particles, then can pass uh, through the ureter outside. Okay. The success rate is high. We can say a success rate from 75 to 80 percent in some cases. Okay. In some cases, 100 percent we can reach with modern, new, uh, this, this kind of machines. Does it have any side effects? Um, side effects, some kind of uh, blood in urine, you know, because uh -huh, okay. blood in urine, pain. Uh, sometimes if the stone big in size, sometimes these particles will come down and will make another problem. Oh. Yeah, for example, let's say that you are breaking one and a half centimeter stone. Mm. Uh, five, six mm uh, fragments will go to, down to the ureter, they mm -hmm. will stack down and they, call, uh, oh. they cause what we call uh, stone street. Okay. Or in German, Steinstrasse. Okay. Yeah, stone street. In this case, we have to go by endoscopy and remove these particles. Oh. Yeah, so uh, this is the first type of treatment, which mm -hmm. is quite common. Mm -hmm. The second one, uh, we call it ureteroscopy. Okay. Or URS. URS, yes. okay. Ureteroscopy means I have to enter inside the body of the patient through his uh, urine canal okay. to the ureter, where, wherever is located the stone, to okay. reach to the stone. Uh -huh. And from this scope, insert laser fiber mm. and start to target or break the stone in situ, means I can see the stone, I can touch the stone in uh -huh, direct way, uh -huh, okay. I can break it, I okay. can take it out and oh, finish the okay. patient. So that will be a complete Success procedure? Success rate in almost 100%, okay. 99% let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one, first one which you said is painful? First, first one, um, little of discomfort can be there, mm. for that we give little sedation only. Okay. Usually the they will tolerate one? it well. Uh, second, well, there is a second procedure. There are two kind of these uh, ureteroscopies. Mm. There is a, a rigid one and flexible one. Okay. I will show, I will explain now the difference, but it's of course under general anesthesia. Okay. In under operation anesthesia. theater under general anesthesia. Okay. Here we can see this is flexible type. Oh. This is flexible scope. Okay. <coughs> this part of the scope will be inserted inside from the canal of urine, okay. go direct to the ureter, reaching to the kidney. Uh -huh. Now I am inside the kidney, I reach. I want to reach different parts of the kidney. Okay. I have here, I can manipulate it, oh, okay. go up, go in the middle, go down. Okay, okay. And from here, uh -huh. 
from this here, mm. I can insert my laser fiber, it will come from here. Okay. Then I can see directly what I do. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Because there is a camera. Yeah, there is a camera. Okay. It's a camera uh -huh. and this flexible tube okay. can reach any part of the urinary system. See, this is up, this is middle, oh. this is down, can rotate it different direction. Okay, you know, okay. can uh -huh. reach any part of the urinary system. Okay. This is a new technique, actually. Okay, that's uh, good. Not very new, but um, not many centers can do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we have many cases of this, and uh, almost daily we do kind this kind of okay. uh, treatment. So this we call flexible urethroscopy, oh. or in other terms, they call it RIRS. RIRS. Yes. Okay. RIRS means retrograde intrarenal surgery. Retrograde oh, no. means we go like this. Uh. Antigrade, we come from up down. But this oh. is uh, retrograde because we go from the canal of urine, from okay. the urethra. Uh -huh. Yes. So actually, this is very effective treatment. And the rigid one is? Rigid one, we don't have this okay. movements. Uh -huh. Rigid one, I am rigid like that in the ureter only, mm -hmm. in the ureter. I cannot uh. go inside the kidney with the rigid. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah, so for uh, each uh, scope, there is a uh, usage. Mm -hmm. So these are the only two available methods to remove kidney stone? No, there is one more. Okay. There is one more. Let's say that patient has a big stone. Okay. A very big stone uh, inside sorry the kidney. Interrupt. So this one, that fiber will uh, remove yes. the stone, Yes, right? fiber through the scope. Uh. I can see my fiber. Mm. I can make the proper setting for laser. Okay. I can break the stone. Then I can basket the them laser. out. Yes. Okay. Uh, but this, again, it's limited. Mm -hmm. because we cannot use in a very big stones because of the time. Oh. It will take, a little, you know, more than two hours. Oh. So there is a method what we call uh, PCNL mm. or per percutaneous nephrolithotomy. Okay. That is, uh, in, uh, in general talk, mm -hmm. it's a keyhole surgery. Ah, okay. Just a small hole in the flank, okay. go direct to the kidney, uh. and from there insert uh, whatever we have, laser, mm -hmm. um, uh, pneumatic lithoclast, and break the stones and take them direct from here. There okay. is no need to use other uh, urinary ways. Okay. Now, uh, this is uh, very common mm. because it's actually cheaper than this. Uh -huh, okay. And it's now there are uh, new techniques. Mm. It started with PCNL. There is after that mini PCNL, mm. means mm. The, the instruments what insert inside the patient are smaller in the size. Oh. Nowadays, just recently started to do super mini. Oh. So PCNL. Mini PCNL and super mini PCNL. Maybe like an injection. Like an needle, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go inside, clear any stone, and come back. Okay. So, but again, every method has advantages and disadvantages. Right, right. Yeah. All right. So, uh, this one, what is the disadvantage of this? Like after the treatment, what are the things the patients might uh, face? Actually, um, the problem in flexible scopes are the costs. Cost. Yes, the cost okay. of one scope. I don't want to say the price, but it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. So the main disadvantage is, uh, is the cost. And the other disadvantage, we cannot uh, reach to the bigger, mm -hmm. bigger mm -hmm. stones. Uh, otherwise, it's very, um, very good technique. All right. So yeah. what are the prophylactions of stones? Uh, simply answering this question, drinking a lot of water. Everybody needs daily to drink. Uh, up to three liters of water. Three liters? Yes, okay. three liters of water daily we have to drink. Uh, some people, they will forget this and... Uh, including me, I guess. <laughs> uh, including everybody who's working, yeah. but you have to keep water somewhere here, right, near, right. beside. And uh, keep regular checkup if there is, uh, you know, um, if the patient had one episode of mm. stones, mm. he might develop it again in his life. Oh, okay. So uh, anybody who had this to, uh, to keep. Other uh, prophylactic things, uh, just to lose weight if patient is obese, okay. because there is a risk of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, to be, uh, to avoid things like um, a product which can, uh, you know, make stones. Uh, like soda containing like uh, a lot of coffee, like oh. uh, oxalate, uh, things uh, like spinach, tomato. I, I don't mean that to avoid completely, mm -hmm. to restrict in the diet, especially for people who have um, high risk to develop the stones. Okay. How about the soft drinks and all? That can also cause... Sorry, about what? Soft drinks. Like, soft, yeah. soft drink, we, we recommend... As a doctors, we recommend to drink water. Okay. Whatever uh, other drinks are not recommended as prophylactic uh, measures, 
but water is the most important. All right. You said that uh, the men are more like having more risk yes. than female. How about children? Can uh, they get? Yes, yes. Actually, children also they can get it uh, as young as five years. Five years. And yes. Okay. Yeah, I have seen many cases of in children, especially if there is other anomalies of the urinary system, they have more chance to develop the stones. Mm -hmm. And uh, some uh, places in the world, even they make it urology pediatric clinics okay. for this kind of uh, treatment. Okay. And they have uh, special types of stone, which is very common in children okay. than in adults. And uh, for them also, the, the treatment will be the same okay. almost, but the for prophylactic measures are very important for parents to okay. take for their children. Uh -huh. For example, for your child, when he goes to the school, he might forget to drink water, right? Mm -mm. So in the lunchbox, instead of juice and soda containing drinks, mm. you put for him a bottle of water. Mm -hmm. It's much better and remind him and uh, let him drink a lot of fluids which is very important to, um, uh, in uh, prevention the stone mm -hmm. formation. How about fresh juices? Um, some of them good, um, uh, but fructose containing products are really not recommended. Oh. Um, and if you ask me what is the best in fluids, I can answer only water. Water. Yeah. yeah. All right, so if you have a doubt, you have a little clear on the Anything more to say about uh, this kidney stone as a final? Uh, kidney stone, uh, as you can see, uh, it's a very important and interesting uh, topic. And um, there are many, many patients. I can say that 80% uh, of our patients mm -hmm. are stone patients. Okay. In, in any go to any hospital, any urology clinic, mm. you'll see that 80% of the patients are stones. Mm. Uh, so um, I can say that uh, if the patient had a stone in his life, he can develop it again. Prophylactic mm -hmm. measures are very important. And uh, a proper treatment at the time, mm -hmm. uh, on the proper time is very important to avoid uh, further complication. Uh, and uh, nowadays, there are really very modern and very, very advanced uh, ways to treat uh, the stones. All right. Initially, the treatment is treatment. Initially, the treatment is not going to be a precaution. Definitely, the treatment is not going to be a precaution. If you have an episode, you will have a chance to get a doctor. Thank you so much, It was very informative and interesting. You will come. My pleasure. Thank you so much. See you again. Yes, thank you. Definitely. Thank you so much once again for your time. Thank you so much. So, pressure we are going to go to the next one. We are going to Once again, thank you so much, Doctor, for your time and explanations. We are going to wind up in the next episode. This is Nisha signing off from Medi Talk from NTV US. Thank you so much. 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 Thank you so much.